Joining us now to talk more about the impact of AI on hiring trends is Sadal Neely, Harvard Business School professor, also Jacqueline Rice Nelson, who is the co-founder and CEO of Tribe AI. And Jacqueline, why don't we try, start with you just with AI? Is this really going to mean that big of a, of a problem for jobs? Is it, is it going to destroy that many jobs? It's first of all, good morning, and it's great to be with you all. Um, I think it's worth starting with uh, the fear that people in the market are feeling, um, which uh, is really substantial. We are hearing this from many different angles. Um, and 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 it's worth just acknowledging that there is a lot of fear. It is not unfounded. Um, I believe that automation will be uh, streamlining different sort of processes and functions. That means that companies of the future will need fewer people to operate. Um, but at the same time, the barrier to entry for companies will go down significantly. Um, and the pace of innovation is rising like nothing we've ever seen before. And so I'd expect to see companies of the future running with fewer people, um, but there are many more companies. And so opportunity still will abound, um, but it may look different than it does today. So Dahl, you do you feel that uh, unconcerned about things? Are you more concerned? I, I think uh, the concerns are legitimate with the advancement of AI and especially generative AI. I distinguish between company-led AI implementations and individual uses of generative AI, which means that people can actually cut the time that it takes for them to do regular tasks. So we're hearing things like what might take four hours to produce is now taking an hour and a half. That's so productivity awesome. is getting boosted, which okay. means um, jobs are gonna get transformed. I hope you're happy, Sadal. I really hope you're happy. <laughs> I hope you're happy. You're telling all these people they can stay home, they're going to be running back, begging at, at the uh, please don't make a don't put a computer in my chair. Let me come back. This is all <laughs> this is all your remote work stuff. Sit all the time. Listen, Joe. Home, I've, I've, I've always I've always said that remote work, hybrid work is digital work, and that our obsession with butts and seats is misplaced. We really need to be thinking about how AI, generative AI especially, is going to transform jobs, build industries, but also displace jobs. Yeah. So this 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 physical in-person virtual, we're way past that, Joe. Yep. It's time to think about it, exactly. how do we upskill. In truth, I was just, I was just kidding you. In truth, what you've been talking about, this is just the next extension of the transformation that, that you've been talking about all along that we better be ready for or we're going to be caught flat-footed. So it's, it, it actually confirms most of the stuff you've been saying, much to, <laughs> much to my I, chagrin. Yeah. I truly it believe it, but Joe, AI's been around for 60 years. Yeah. This is not new. It's just been barreling Google's towards us. AI, isn't it? How does Google well, find what you're yes, looking for? It's got to it's gotta be it. Jacqueline, explain, explain Tribe AI, what it is that you all do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, we are an AI first company that is helping other companies build AI solutions. Um, so uh, think of us as a modern consultancy, the sort of uh, AI enabled uh, helpers who can help companies actually really bridge the gap between their AI aspirations and reality. And so that was sort of the big piece I was going to come to is all of the, the impact on jobs hinges on companies being successful with, with building AI solutions. Uh, because otherwise we are seeing what, what you just mentioned, which is a productivity boost for employees. And, and I think that this is really the core moment for companies, the make or break. Um, I think we, we saw a flurry of activity out of the gate post launch of chat GPT um, with companies who um, really uh, sort of saw the, the moment that they had to move uh, on AI. Um, and then many of them are, are sort of hitting a bit of a wall right now. Um, and that's kind of, I think, the, the core message for uh, really reaching some of this economic growth is that they have to keep going. They have to keep pushing. Um, it may be a less exciting story right now because there are so many challenges they're working through. But going heads down, the companies that are really, really stay focused, that's where 
where we're seeing the gains be had, um, and and it is worth it. You you mentioned Google a moment ago. That's that's my former employer where I worked for um, eight plus years. Um, and you are right. Every part of the company is powered with AI. That's true for Tribe AI as well. Um, and this this is the future of where companies are headed, um, and will determine the the winners from the losers, in my opinion. Hey, Sadal, let, let's talk just a little bit about ChatGPT. It actually saw its first decline, I think, this past month uh, in users. And I, I think it's probably because kids are out of school, out of college, and they don't need to use it to write all their papers, for the most part. That tells you a little <laughs> bit about some of the fury, maybe, at this point, some of the excitement around this. But Andy Jassy was on yesterday on CNBC and said that there, there is going to be some real substance to this, and that is still coming, that wave. What would you tell people to do, workers to do, to prepare for that and how to get ready? So I think it's important to start learning and experimenting with ChatGPT and Bing and others. So what's also happened is the proliferation of ChatGPT early on starting November is actually augmented by the releases of other uh, generative AI systems, including visual-based like MidJourney. So it's important to experiment. It's also incredibly important to understand all the harms and the liabilities that come with these, anywhere from bias to misinformation, these things actually hallucinate and make things up. So we have to be very careful and develop guardrails to ensure that we're not uh, perpetuating these harms, including violating consent, privacy, and other things. So there's a learning curve that people have to climb very quickly in order to use these systems responsibly. But there's no doubt in my mind when school is back in session in September that every student is going to use these systems as a companion to their learning.